Of course. Uh, in order to, to deal with Part C, I want to look at this picture just a little bit. They specifically asked us to consider this as a uniform rod and placed the pivot point one-third of the way in from the end. So you needed to figure out what the moment of inertia was there using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, and I think there's one more thing you need to realize. The center of mass is still at the center. So this distance becomes important in this problem because this is your x center of mass. This is the distance from the pivot point to where the center of mass is because this is where the force of gravity is acting on the object. So when we calculate the period of oscillation, we need this distance. Now, assuming that the center of mass is at the center of the rod and assuming that the pivot is a third of the way in. You just subtract one half from or one third from one half. And that'll give you this distance, which I'm pretty confident is one sixth L. Another little thing I want you to, to think about about this distance is if, if you actually pivot the object and place the pivot point at the center of mass, you don't get simple harmonic motion. And you'll see that here in just a minute. So Am I good to go from here? Is that enough? You needed to find the moment of inertia for this. Do you need me to do this part? Because I need it for question C. If you do, just give me the yes sign and I'll do it. All right. This is the parallel axis theorem. So I'm going to start with 1 12th ML squared, and I'm going to add to it M times one sixth L squared. We're moving it one sixth of L. We're moving it from the center to where this pivot point is. Um, the ML squared comes out front and I get one twelfth plus one thirty sixth. Uh, I think we can get common denominators there of thirty six. So three thirty sixth and one thirty sixth. Is that um, one ninth? That'll give us four thirty sixths, and that's one ninth, I think. So this will be one ninth ml squared, and that's got to be the moment of inertia. All good there. All righty. Now let's go ahead and do. Uh, what do you want? The period or the frequency? Period. So period equals two pi divided by omega. And omega for a physical pendulum is x m g over i. So that means this is 2 pi times the root of i over x m g, which will be 2 pi times, all right, let's put it all together, 1 ninth m l squared divided by x, which is 1 sixth l uh, M G. Oof. Um, the one ninth divided by one sixth is two thirds. So this works out to be two pi times the root of two L over three G. Yep. Pretty okay with that. Um, again, x, the distance from the center of mass to the pivot point. And if you try to put your pivot point at the center of mass, you'll get zero there in the denominator, which gives you an infinite period. Well, that's true. There's no restoring force if you mount it at the center of mass. It, just give it a push and it'll just spin. That's why you get infinity for the period there. All right. Is that pretty good? I'd also like to get a chance to ask you questions on your homework. I know you have homework sitting out there. So I went through several in third period. I am willing to go through whatever in this class, too. Let me tell you the ones I went through in third period, though. Um, so if you want to 
try something different, that's fine, but I'll answer whatever questions you ask. 18. A one kilogram block, let's see. One kilogram block is attached to a spring with a spring constant of 16 newtons per meter. While the block is sitting at rest, a student hits it with a hammer and almost instantaneously gives it a speed of 40 centimeters per second. What are the amplitude of the subsequent oscillations and the speed, the block speed at the point where X equals one half A? All right, um, there's a variety of ways to approach this question. They gave us the max speed though, and we have an expression for the max speed and we have information about the system. We have the mass of the system and the, the spring constant. So I would say, let's do this. V max equals X naught times omega. Um, this will give us the amplitude of the oscillation uh, with omega being equal to square root of K over M. So in this one, the square root of K over M is four because K is 16 and M is one. So that's four. So V max is 0.4 meters per second and that equals X naught times four. So X naught must be uh, four is in radians per second. The radians cancels out, and this can give me meters. So 0.1 meters. Launch. Uh, let's see. Question B, the block speed at the point where X equals one half A. And so I assume by A they mean the one half the amplitude. Um, I'm going to use conservation of energy here. I think that's the fastest way to get there by saying one half KX squared equals one half mv squared. I think that'll be fastest. Uh, that's gonna cancel out the, the halves and x is one half of a, so that's gonna be k times 0 0.05 squared equals mv squared. That's probably enough to get you started, don't you think? Will that be okay? Or do you want me to keep going? All right, so 21c. All right. A spring is hanging from the ceiling attached, attaching a 500 gram physics book to the spring, cause it to stretch 20 centimeters in order to come to equilibrium. So that's 0.5 times 10, five Newton spring, 20 centimeters. So we can use that to get the spring constant, which we're probably gonna need for a question C. From equilibrium, the book is pulled down another 10 centimeters and released, what is the period of oscillation and what is the book's maximum speed? Question A gave us enough to figure out the spring constant. All right, put a book on it, watch the, string, the spring stretch. So the book was 500 grams, that's 0.5 kilograms, times 10 is five newtons. So, we're done for this, but that's um, what I would expect to do to get K. And then V max is going to be X naught times omega. Let me go there.